Hello YouTube, and welcome back to another before and after. So, for this one, we are going to be looking at Suicide Squad, and... Man, do I love these trailers. Okay, so... Yeah, these trailers are awesome. So... They seem to be getting, so DC for one seems to be getting quite a bit of inspiration for these trailers from Guardians of the Galaxy and how they synced up their music with class, how they synced up their trailer with classic rock. And please let this become a trend. Seriously, please let this happen. I mean, okay, it'd be kind of annoying to go on to these songs and then hear uh, all in the comments, I came here from this trailer, but you know what, it would totally be worth it. Because, seriously, I just love this. It started, off with, it started off with Guardians of the Galaxy, and I pray that this becomes a trend with classic rock now replacing that stupid dun-dun-dun noise from Inception. Like, really, why was that a thing? It wasn't intimidating outside of Inception, and... I mean, okay, it can get some people excited, but it just doesn't really work for me. So I'm really hoping that they'll go more the route of Suicide and Guardians of the Galaxy for the rest of the trailer soon, or at least that'll be a trend or something, because seriously, I would not have any problem with that. Alright, so now let's actually talk about this trailer a bit. There's a Queen song, and that automatically sold me on this movie. Seriously, I'm a fan of Queen, and their use of Baskin Rinfany, I don't know, did I pronounce that right? I've never been able to tell. I honestly have no idea how to pronounce that name right. Baskin Rinfany? Rinfany? I, I don't know. I, I just tried. That was my, my poor, poor attempt. So, yeah. And they use that song so well in this trailer, I really do love it. I honestly watched this trailer like ten times on my first time watching it. So, yeah, I really loved it. And the second trailer synced up the music just as well, except this time they did it with, um, um, Ballroom Blitz and... Trying to remember the other one's name. That's the one that I'm having a, tr a hard time with. Um, you don't own me. I think that that's it. Um, but they sync those ones up very well as well. And then the third one came out, and it used modern music. Okay, so yeah, for one, I don't hate modern music. There are some bands out there that I like that are modern. Like Fall Out Boy, I don't hate them. One more public's okay, I guess. Okay, so yeah, I don't really listen to a lot of modern music. Seriously, if you check my music playlist, it's mostly 80s or 90s or just plain out classic rock. But yeah, there is this trailer, the third one, that mixed it with that had modern music, and I'm not gonna say I hate it. For one, I love the syncing in that trailer. Seriously, they, again, syncing completely on point. Seriously, DC, whoever did the syncing and the awesome advertising in these trailers, get them to advertise all your movies. Seriously, they know what they're doing. But... Yeah, seriously, the marketing team, you guys are on point. Um, and, yeah, honestly, I didn't hate all the music in that one. The first two were okay. So, yeah, didn't mind the first two, so it was mainly the third stupid rap one that I didn't like. But, and also the second one was meh. But the first one was... Meh, a little bit more positive of a meh, so yeah, that's saying something. So, yeah, honestly, this all three of these trailers look pretty awesome. I know I usually just talk about the official one, but all these trailers have looked really awesome. And I really do love the syncing up with the music. So now, let's move on from that, on to someone who is not in the movie. There's no Agent 37. 
So disappointed. Okay, so if you guys don't know who Agent 37 is, allow me to explain. Nightwing. If you don't know who that is, it's Dick Grayson. If you don't know who he is, he's the very first Robin who worked alongside Batman. Eventually, he went off to do his own thing and changed and changed his name and costume to Nightwing. But eventually, he was presumed dead. So Batman saw that as a ticket to get him into um, an agency called Spiral as a double agent, where he was Agent Thirty Seven. And, yeah, that's pretty much where he currently is. And that is honestly my favorite Robin. And seriously, make a Robin, Nightwing, Red Hood, Red Robin, or any Robin except for Casey. I don't like Casey. Make any one of them have a movie. And really, DC, if you're watching this, please do that. I love all the Robins. They are awesome. Red Hood, Red Robin. Nightwing, okay, well, not necessarily Red Robin, as he came into play after Bruce Wayne uh, died, so, yeah, maybe not him, but the other two, Red Hood and Nightwing, they couldn't be used, besides, Batman v Superman kind of referenced Jason Todd, who's Red Hood, so, yeah, you can make that movie, please make that movie, and please have Nightwing in it, please! I really want to see that happen. But anyway, okay, he's not in the movie, so I don't know why I'm harping on him. But anyway, there are... Now let's actually talk about the characters in this movie, starting off with one of them that didn't really seem that important, but I still want to bring up. Amanda Waller, who looks okay. I at least think I'm going to like her more than the Arrow portrayal of her, where... Why is she as skinny as a toothpick there? Seriously. She was so, so thin. That's not how I know the character. She's usually rather plump, to say the least. And, yeah, they followed the more modern comic design where she's as thin as a toothpick. Don't know why. But at least this movie does seem to have found a nice in-between with that, so totally awesome. I'm cool with that. But as I ever look, she does seem to fit into the character's personality pretty well, so yeah. I'm kind of excited to see what they're going to do with her. And also, Amanda Waller died on Arrow, so yeah, I'm guessing now that none of these DC movies are going to tie into the TV shows. I know I could have already gotten that by there being a different Flash actor, but still, it's totally new information. So, yeah. Outside of Amanda Waller, we got Deadshot, who looks alright. Like, I'm not really sold on Will Smith. I do admit that he is a good act, but he brings a lot of charisma into his performances. But, yeah necessarily know how he's gonna play it here. He seems to be playing more of a serious role, but he does still seem to have some charisma, so just gonna have to wait and see on him. So then after, and outside of that, the character does look quite a bit like his comic, actually having color in his costume. Mind blown. Color. Yeah. For some odd reason, all the villains are the one getting the color. Don't necessarily know why, but yeah, it's at least nice to see that some characters are actually getting colors in their costume. And also, they smile in this movie. DC, I forgot that you. I thought that you guys forgot how to do that. You guys remember? How to smile? I am shocked. But yeah, still, this one, this movie definitely looks like it's definitely going to be a different step from the other DC Extended Universe movies, and I am all for it. To me, those movies are just trying to make every other character Batman, and that's something that I'm not really for, so 
Yeah, I'm completely fine with them trying to go a different route with this, so... Yeah, I'm excited for that. Then, after Deadshot, we have Harley Quinn, who... For one, her costume is really skimpy, I don't know why. I don't get it. I mean, like, okay, I kinda get it, but... Seriously, why? Like, okay, I can at least say that, yes, they do in... That they do put in some parts of her original costume into it with, like, the diamonds and stuff. And she does get the hammer. Okay, the mallet. The classic mallet. She does get that. So, yeah, at least her costume does incorporate some of the classic elements. But down for her betrayal, she definitely does seem to be an a okay betrayal to me. She looks like she's going to be awesome. From what I've heard from Joey Desco, she's very well done. So, yeah, I'm excited. Um, then after her, we have Captain Boomerang, who looks freaking hilarious. Seriously, Captain Boomerang, I never thought I'd be saying this, but he looks hilarious. He seems to be more the comedy relief of the movie, and, yeah, for someone with the alias, like, Captain Boomerang, yeah, it's not really that shocking that he's gonna be the comic relief, and, honestly, I'm gonna be fine with Honestly, I think I'm gonna be fine with that. He honestly looks like an awesome character in this movie, so I'm at least excited to see him. Um, although he is more of a Flash villain, which I think is kind of weird that he's gonna be coming in here, but I don't know, he could also be in a Flash movie. Um, then we have El Diablo. I honestly know nothing about this character. All I know is that he has fire abilities, and also I think that he died. I, I don't know, maybe I'm remembering a different character here. But, yeah, it might be him, I don't know. So yeah, I don't really know that much about this character, but from what I've seen in the trailers, he looks really cool. Then we have Enchantress who, dear god, she's out- Wow, she's beating out Harley Quinn in the skimp- in the little skimpy costume there. Seriously, what the heck is she wearing? Why are both of these girls like, oh yeah, we're going into the line of fire, let's not wear any protective gear or anything. Seriously, what is with that? At least Katana looks like, hey, she has some armor on. But... These two, no, no armor be allowed. Don't know why, just... Just... Just not doing that for some reason, I don't... I don't get it, but anyway, yeah, she looks all right. Though I do kind of wish that there was a bit of green in her costume, but at least her costume here is more unique than it was originally in the comics, because her very first costume was her in a little green dress with a witch hat. That was it. <laughs> Amazing costume. So yeah, I can't at least see why they would upgrade this, but... Or the newer comics with cooler co with a cooler costume for her. So yeah, it's not like you guys don't have options. And then after, but yeah, I do at least think that she does look like she's gonna be cool. Also, I do really like that one scene in the third trailer where they show her getting her powers by just holding hands and then magically she flips into the Enchantress. I love that. That looks so cool. Um. And so then after her, we have, um, Slip, Slipknot, Slip, Slip Rope, I, I, I always forget his name. He looks like he's gonna die. Yeah, seriously, he looks like he's gonna die. That's my very first reaction to this guy. Like, you hardly see him in the trailer. I'm just like, yeah, give him a red shirt. Give him a red shirt with a target on the back. Or maybe even give him... Give him Han Solo's jacket, I guess. I don't know. Give him some Stormtrooper armor. Who knows? He's gonna die. And if he lives, good for him. <laughs> God, he just looks like he's gonna die. And really, his whole entire villain thing is he has ropes. And he uses them. So, yeah. Not that shocking that he might die. That he's probably gonna die there. So, um... And then after him, um, we have Rick Flagg, who, honestly, I thought was going to be Nightwing. Still disappointed on that. But, 
yeah, Rick Flag is a very crucial part of the Suicide Squad in the comics, and yeah, as I see that he's gonna be in this movie, I kind of knew that he was gonna be in it going in, so yeah, gotta be pretty awesome. He's a pretty cool character, so yeah, I'm inter I'm kind of interested in, in seeing how he's gonna play out. So then we also have the Joker. Why does he look like that? That's my only question with this. The acting style actually looks like he does fit the Joker, but... Dear God, what happened? Like, really? Why doesn't he look like the Joker? I mean, okay, yeah, for one little black suit thing, nice nod to the comics, but... Why is he like this? Why does he have so many tattoos? Why does he have damage right on his head? I don't get it. <laughs> I really don't get it. Why? But anyway, could be good. Joey Tedesco said that he was actually pretty good, so yeah. I at least got hope from him. So, yeah. Don't really like the Joker's costume, but outside of that, the acting style does seem to fit the character pretty well, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna have to wait and see if I can overlook the costume or not. So... Then we have... But also, I do think that the Joker will probably be more in flashback mode for this movie. Like, he'll probably be more in the Harley Quinn origin. Because, yeah, amazingly, the Joker plays a big part in that. Um... But, yeah, the Joker will probably just be in those bits, or at least that's what I'm thinking. So, yeah. That that would be something. Like, I don't see him being a main villain in the movie. That I see going to... Um... That big guy in the subway station. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. Might be Tattoo Man, that's something that I've heard, but if so, he's a Green Lantern villain, what's he doing here? Um, and if it is him, then I'm cool with that, it's just like, I have no idea who it is. Even IMDB hasn't said, or at least I don't know who's playing this villain, so I don't know who to check, specifically, so... Yeah, just kinda, kinda lost there, as, as to who this is, but... Outside of that, looks pretty cool. Harley Quinn has an awesome looking revolver. Seriously, I love revolvers. Those are my favorite types of pistols. Yes, I have a favorite type of pistol. Deal with it. But, yeah, revolvers are awesome, and Harley Quinn's looks awesome. Seriously, that revolver looks so cool. I forgot to bring that up with Harley Quinn, so I'm gonna bring it up now. Um, and so, yeah, looks pretty cool. I'm excited for it. I, I'm actually more excited for it than I was for Batman v Superman because it looks very different from the other DC movies out right now. Like, it actually seems like it's going to have a lightened tone to it. You know, that thing that makes people feel a little bit more happy and peppy and a little bit more smiling in the movie. Something that actually looks enjoyable. Shocking. But, yeah, it actually does look like it is going to be a very different style from the other DC Extended Universe movies, so I'm excited for it. So, yeah. Bye. Uh, or later. I still don't know how to end these. Does anyone have any recommendation as to how to end the before part? Should I just say later or something? Because I'm going to see you guys later. I don't know. Someone recommend something. Alright, so I have now gone back from Suicide Squad. And it was incredibly, amazingly mediocre. So, yeah. Let's get into the story aspect. So, what's going on in this movie? Well... Pretty much, there's this team of villains who are being forced to do good by the government. So, yeah. I, 
yeah, this is real shocking information there from the trailer, and if you know about the characters and the team already, then yeah, that would be really shocking to you. But, um, now, the main thing that surprised me with this movie is that they're a villain. It's the Enchantress. Not really giving anything away here as, yeah, they reveal this pretty early on, and this is my biggest problem with the, this is one of my biggest problem with the movie, is the Enchantress. Now, okay, so what's wrong with her? What's not wrong with her? Okay, so for one, her big plan is to make a giant machine that will do something. We don't know what it'll do. It'll just do something. And she is going to use this machine to destroy satellites as she dances. Makes sense. Yeah, I really have no idea what her plan is here, but apparently it involves belly dancing and a giant machine that can make trash circle around in the sky. So, yeah. Real, real intimidating plan there, huh? It's like... She'll, she'll make trash circle around in the sky. Be afraid. So, yeah, that was just silly. And her dancing for no reason to get to work is so dumb looking. Like, every single time she's using her machine, she's always just, like, dancing there. I'm like, what the heck is she doing? Why does she need to dance? What? Does she just want to dance, or does this actually tie into her use of the spell? In which case, she's an enchantress. Enchantresses don't need to dance. I mean, okay, they need... Okay, sometimes they might need to perform certain, um, acts for it, but I've never seen any of them that needed to dance. But apparently, this one did, because reasons. So, yeah, that and her motivation is non-existent. Her motivation is pretty much people used to worship me and now they don't. I'm angry about this and I want to make them all into faceless, weird, bubble-headed demons. So they will worship me? Bubble-headed demons equals profit, I guess. So... Yeah, that's... What? <laughs> like, the weird thing about this, too, is that she actually asked some people, Hey, will you worship me? And she doesn't turn them into any of those weird eyeball things, so that's kind of contradictory to that whole entire, I'm gonna make them into eyeball things. Like, into bubble-headed things. Like, what? What is her plan? I don't get it. But anyway, what did I actually think about her character? She was so underdeveloped. She's barely in the movie, and when she is, she never gets any establishment. You hardly get to see June Moon, who, oh yeah, that's her human form, who's also in love with Rick Flag. That's important, but it's just shoved to the side like it never mattered. Don't know why. And it really does get in the way. You're supposed to care about June Moon. That's why you should be on the side of Rick Flag. But they never give you any time to actually get to know her. So you don't care about her in the least. You instead just think, yeah, kill her. I won't care. And she's not El Diablo. Not gonna care about her. So, yeah... She was, she was really very, very boring. So, very bad villain. Also, the guy who always appeared in the trailers as our main villain was her brother, who, yeah, is even less under, is even less developed than her. He is just there. That is honestly his whole role. He never even gets a line, I don't think, outside of some weird foreign language, which none of us can understand, so... 
Yeah, he gets no English lines, and in the final climax, he doesn't say a word. So he only, like, talks to his sister twice, and then that's it. So, yeah. Not that great of a main villain. So, after her, let's address another flaw that I had with this movie. Um, the team relationship. Where did it come from? Yeah, all of, like, they all get out of jail, they're about ready to go fight the Enchantress and stuff, and then all of a sudden, when, I guess that on the plane ride, maybe, or something, they all became friends. Because now they're all going around talking like, oh yeah, we're with you, why wouldn't we be with you? I'm just like, when did this happen? What? When? Do you guys know each other from past crimes or something? What are you... How do you know this guy? How does Deadshot know Captain Boomerang? How does this happen? Like, I was so confused as to how they actually became friends. Like, I don't have a problem with it, I just wish that it had actually been set up and that, yeah, we had actually seen that happen. Amanda Waller was making them work for her. She wasn't making them become friends. I thought there would be some conflict with that, but... Never came. And then the final problem I have with this movie is the Joker. Okay. So, what do I think about the Joker? Meh. He's meh. And I find that so weird to say because before I was just like, wow, I'm gonna hate this Joker just looking at him, but... Well, yeah, his look, damage tattoo on on his forehead, I don't, I don't know. His look is weird. Don't like his look, but outside of that, the acting style is very unique from other Jokers, but then again, I never imagined him this way, so I guess that could just be my issue with it. Like, I just never imagined the Joker as, like, a gangster type of guy. So I always imagined the Penguin more in that style, but... Yeah, I guess that that's... That's cool. If that's what they want to do with it. And he definitely seems insane, I'll give him that. So... Yeah. What don't I like about him? Well, his relationship with Harley Quinn. Now... This is kind of a weird complaint, because if you're not familiar with their relationship, then you might view my complaint as kind of harsh. But, I wish it was abusive. Yeah, I honestly do wish that their relationship was more abusive, as that's how their relationship always was. It's always been abusive. And, yeah. The Joker honestly pushed Harley Quinn out of a window once, just because she annoyed him. That is a very abusive relationship, and yet, she viewed it as her fault for getting pushed out that window. So, yeah, you can sort of, you can really see their relationship just from that one scene. But, nothing like that happens in this movie. There's only one scene, there are only two scenes where the Joker pushes her off of something, and both, and the first time, Harley wanted to do it, to get into, like, the toxic chemicals with the mad love storyline, which, which, by the way, gets, like, three minutes of screen time. Real, real good job there. Um, and also... Yeah, the second the second time, he pushes her out of a helicopter to save her life. Let's take a look back at Mark Hamill's Joker, who would never do that. Where did this come from? Seriously, they actually do have a loving relationship. The Joker only abandoned her once, and then I honestly think that he was just hoping that she would get out of the car. Seriously, the only time that he abandons her is when they're underwater. And, yeah, then it made sense. And anyway, he still went out of his way to try and get her out of the prison that, ba that Batman locked her up in. So, yeah... What happened? 
This honestly really annoyed me as this is the Joker's biggest role in the movie is getting Harley Quinn out of jail and saving Harley Quinn. Okay. That should be Harley's perspective. Harley's perspective would be like that. That's how she would view the Joker. But the thing is, that's not how he acted to her, ever! He would never treat her with any, sort, with any sort of affection. He would always treat her as just a means to an end, and that's all. I was so waiting in this movie for him to say, well, she knows something, and that's why I need to get her out, because it's something very important that he doesn't want slipping out. That would have been an explanation for all of this, and... Yeah, it would have been really helpful for my viewing experience of this, but it's never uttered. So, yeah, I guess the Joker just did this because he actually does love her, and... What? Okay, so yeah, I spent enough time harping on that, but that was my biggest flaw with this movie, as yeah, the Joker is in a lot of the advertising for this movie, and... His main role in this film, he's barely in it, but his main role is getting Harley out of jail. And that just felt so, so out of character to me. I just couldn't move past it. I know there are some people who can, and that's fine if you can. That's good, even. But I just personally could not. That was just in my way so much, I just couldn't ignore it. Um, so, yeah, after him, let's talk about Harley, who is done surprisingly, okay, well, not really surprisingly, I did kind of expect this, but she's done very well in this movie. Like, on her end of the relationship with the Joker, it's perfect, it's down to a T, and also, I loved her calling him Mr. J and Puddin. Just those little nods I liked. Also, we do actually get we do actually get to see her in the classic red and black costume, which I honestly thought was so awesome and it made me so happy even though it looked like two people just in cosplay in a black room with a spotlight on them and just looked so fake, but you know what? I don't care. It was so so awesome to me. And we actually do see her looking at that costume later, but I guess just like Goku and Dragon Ball Evolution, she looks at it and it's just like, eh, I'll wear this later. Okay, well, at least unlike there, she does give an explanation saying, eh, it was too small for me, but then she puts on a costume that is so small for her. Like, really, look at those shorts. Those are underwear, not shorts. What the heck is she wearing? Really? This is too small for me, but these shorts will do. Like, really, what? I still have an issue with that costume. Just, like, it looks so stupid. But, okay, outside of that, I thought that she was really good in this movie. She's definitely one of the more big things in this movie, and that's... And there's a good reason for that. There's a very good reason. She's one of the main characters, and I honestly found her really interesting. And they do dive into the Mad Love storyline, which I wish was expanded on more, but... You know what? They have, like, ten characters they got set up here in 123 minutes, so... Yeah, like, there's a lot to set up, and... Yeah, there's just a lot to do with this, so I can see why they didn't have enough time to go into it. Although, I do think they could have cut out the scene where Amanda Waller is telling these guys about the Suicide Squad, just to cut to the next scene where some other guy, the guy that she was talking to, is talking to the government agency about the Suicide Squad. Why do we need to hear that twice? Okay, like seriously, they could have just made that scene be combined with that one. So, speaking of Amanda Waller, she's okay. She's, she's very okay. I like her. She's cool. Um, she's, she's pretty badass. I didn't have my crush door with me, but yeah, there, counts. Okay, so yeah, she's cool. Moving on, I guess. So... Then we have Deadshot, who 
Will Smith does play very well. Um, and I do find his storyline pretty interesting and how he's doing everything for his daughter. Very different from the Arrow version where he accidentally, where he, where he kills his daughter and wife and like, anger and stuff. Like, that's very... T oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Wait, no, he didn't kill his daughter. I think he just killed the wife or something. I don't know. I haven't seen that one in a while, but very, very different from that one. So, yeah, that was cool. And I like how he actually did become an assassin because he wanted to pay for his daughter's college and everything. Even though this one job that we see him do could have paid for it entirely. Like, he gets like $20 million. I don't know. Like, he gets a lot of money from this. And just like, no, that's still not enough. I had to do a few more jobs beforehand. Like, I guess he really wants to be safe on this. But still. Um, and in the end, he does end up you know, being able to help out his daughter and stuff. He still gets to meet up with her. He gets to talk gun angles with her. So, yeah, pretty good relationship. Actually, man, I wish that my dad would talk about gun angles with me. That'd be awesome. So, yeah, apparently this kid is now cool with her dad talking about killing, even though before she wasn't. Don't, don't know what changed, but anyway... Yeah, in the end, they all do get locked up in prison again, which, yeah, makes sense. They are still criminals. So, yeah, they're all locked back up in prison. Even though Captain Boomerang was never locked up in prison, so they lock him up. Um, so yeah, let's talk about Captain Boomerang now. Um, he's barely in this. Like, he is hardly in this movie. Like, he's there for, like, a for like a total of like 10 minutes, I think, or maybe like seven. Yeah, I think seven. So like he's hardly in this movie and that's something I was kind of disappointed in because he looked really funny in the trailers and he is pretty funny in this movie as a pink unicorn. So yeah, he's pretty funny. I do wish that we got to see a little bit more of him. See what he was fighting for more here, what he was trying to move past, what loss he had. But, no, I guess he lost his pink unicorn thing. I don't know. Wait, no, he still had that. So, yeah, he lost nothing. All the other characters have lost something except for him. Um, so another character who wasn't in this movie that much is Killer Croc, who, honestly, is pretty cool. Like, for what little time he's in this, I think that he's even in this less than Captain Boomerang. He's in here, like, five minutes. And, like, I'm fine with that. They pretty much sum him up the best with one line. They say he looked like a monster because of his skin condition that he has, which... Yeah, question, how does his skin condition make him be able to actually work like a crocodile and be able to stay underwater for hours like how does that work can someone explain that okay but um yeah he looked like a monster so everyone treated him like a monster so he just pretty much became a monster and i think that that's the best sum up of him and later on in this movie he says hey, you know what i'm beautiful so deal with it so yeah i was cool with that so like, he's fine. I think they killed a guy underwater later, though. I don't know. The shot was very, very hard to see what was going on. But I think they killed a guy, because later on he's getting tasered. Like, I don't know why he did that. He just killed this guy for no real reason. He just wanted to, I guess, or something. Like, he just kills this guy out of nowhere, and I'm just, like, so confused there. But, yeah, he was okay. Um, I was really hoping for one scene where he would grab a rock and throw it at the Enchantress. Like, seriously, I just wanted that to happen. Like, there's a moment where he's standing right next to a rock, and I was just thinking, okay, grab the rock and throw it at her. Please. But no, never does. Batman the Animated Series fans will get me there. But, um, they'll get what I'm talking about, but... Yeah, sadly, he doesn't throw a rock at her. So disappointed. But, um, anyway, he was still pretty cool. And I do really like the makeup on him. He looks very awesome. So, yeah, he was cool. 
So, after him, we are going to be talking about Katana, who I didn't talk about, who I did not talk about in my before part, except for saying how her costume looked, and I hope that me having a real Katana out right now will make up for that. <laughs> really, I do actually have a real Katana with me. Don't question why I have that. So... Yeah, um, Katana is barely in this film, and I was honestly pretty disappointed about that, because she's a very cool character, and I would have liked to have seen more of her. Like, the way that she's acted in this movie is very cool, and I didn't really like how some of her storylines and stuff were just hulky exposition, like, Oh yeah, inside of the sword. Make sure that you don't try. Make sure that she doesn't kill you because her sword can trap souls and stuff. And just like, okay, I get what they're talking about because I read the because I'm a comic fan, so I know what they're talking about there. But unexperienced people going in who don't know this character will just be totally lost. Um, and also they're just like, oh yeah. She's talking to her sword, because that's where her husband is. Her husband was killed with a sword, and now her soul is trapped in there. And I'm just like... Why are you bringing this up like this? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, really, she's hardly even given any backstory. And I don't know why. It's just like, she has such a cool backstory. Like... Honestly, Katana could get a movie on all on her own, and it would be awesome. Like, just the sum of her character that I just brought up here, that would make for an amazing movie. Please, someone do that. At DC, please. Um, but, yeah, Katana is hardly in this movie, and I was pretty to the point about that. Though, from where she is, she is pretty cool. Although, she doesn't really kill anyone outside of in flashback mode, so, yeah. I was kind of disappointed about that. Um, speaking of flashbacks, all the flashbacks in this movie are, like, the ones on Arrow. They're so fastly done. Um, they take, like, 40 seconds each, and then they're just, like, done. I don't know why they did that. Maybe the Arrow flashback team came in here and just said, No, we're gonna do this for you. Um... So, yeah, don't know why they did that, but they at least explained it. Um, there was kind of a random flashback point with Harley, like, she's looking down some staircase, and then she automatically thinks back to when she jumped off of a building into toxic weight, into chemicals, like, how does that make her think back to that? I really want to know. Like, oh man, I'm looking down at something. This is making me all remember when I jumped off of a building into a, into a vat of chemicals. I don't know why. Um, so, yeah. She was, she was there, I guess. That, that was a random flashback. Um, so, then we also have Slipknot, who, oh my god, I don't think I'm spoiling this for anyone, but he dies so freaking fast. Like, he gets, like, three lines, I think, in this movie. Like, one of them where he's just saying okay about joining this. Um, one of them where he's talking to Captain Boomerang, who's saying, hey, I think in these, I think in these implants, yeah, I think they're fake just to get us to not go away, and he's just like, yeah. Like, that's his big line there, and then they keep on talking, he's just like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna make a run for it, how about you? He's like, okay. That's honestly his whole line. That's his whole entire character right there. Like, I knew that he was gonna die, I knew it was coming, but dear god, I did not expect it coming so soon. Okay, so, wow, alright. And now I am saving my, okay, wait, no, I'm saving my character for last, but I forgot about one more character, Rick Flagg, who was alright. I think he's fine. Like, there's nothing really big to talk about with him there. He's just okay. So, 
Then after him, yeah, I summed him up well, um, we have El Diablo, who I'm going into a bit of spoiler territory here, so might want to skip ahead a little bit. He dies, and it is so sad, honestly. I cared more about his death than I did Superman's, and it was just sad. Like, I honestly think that this is my favorite character in the movie, as he gets a lot of death to him. He's probably, like, one of the main characters, or, like, one of the main side characters in this movie, and I wish they had gotten more screen time. So, yeah, I don't know that much about this character. I said that, I said that in the before part. All I know is that he has fire powers, and that's pretty much it. But, if this is his backstory, then it's much more established to me. Like, I really do like this one. Pretty much, here he is... A man who has had these powers of fire ever since he was a kid, and as he got older, they got stronger. And whenever he would get angry, he would lose control. So, yeah, that's something that would happen. Eventually, though, he got a wife and kids, two kids even, and, well, one day his wife said, Okay, you know what? I can't, I can't take this anymore. I'm gone. I'm gonna get this money, gonna take these guns with me for some reason, because I guess I need these, I'm gonna take the kids, and I'm gone, okay? And he didn't want that to happen, he wouldn't let that happen, and he accidentally got very angry and burnt down the house. He killed his wife and his kids, and ever since then, he pretty much just became a pacifist. He won't hurt anyone, he won't lose control, he doesn't want to use his powers anymore, and honestly, I thought that he was a very interesting character, like, even after he burnt down the house by mistake, he surrendered to the police after that, he was just like, you know what, no, I I'm done, just take me in, like, I found him to be a very interesting character, and he was probably the most interesting to me. Harley was probably up there, as well as Deadshot, but El Diablo I really ended up liking, and honestly, I felt kind of bad for the guy a lot. Um, also, his final form as a skeleton on fire, awesome! Also, no Ghost Rider similarities, but still awesome. So, yeah, I thought that was really cool, and he was by far my favorite character in this movie. So, yeah, El Diablo was awesome. Um, sadly, he, die he dies, and I'm hoping that they'll pull a Superman here and, like, have a little hint that he survived. Like, we didn't say until the very end of the credits, or I don't know if there's, like, a second scene at the end or something, like what Marvel's been doing, but there was a scene at the end that we did see. We left the theater because one of the people that I went with didn't like the song, I was playing, and that made sense. It was a rap song, and it was pretty, pretty bad. So, yeah, we left. At, we left during that song, but we did see the end credit scene, which has Batman talking to Amanda Waller about needing some files on Aquaman and the Flash. He gets nothing on Cyborg. So, yeah, he says, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into this." Nothing is being foreshadowed at all. Okay, yeah, Justice League. Cool. Very much like the Avengers, though. Like, seriously, they took a lot from the Avengers there. Like, there I was just thinking, I'm here to talk to you about, propos about proposition. Like, seriously, that's all I was thinking about that time. But, whatever. It was cool, so I'll give them that. Um... Also, our theater! Yeah, that's right, I'm gonna talk about the theater because I can, and also I filmed inside this theater, so why not? Um, this theater was much less crowded than our last one. Here is a shot of our theater. You can hardly see anything, but here's a shot of it anyway. Word in here. Hmm. It's <laughs> There's nothing on. <laughs> Hunter over here thinks it's illegal or not. Okay, no one can see you because of the lighting. You don't need to cover up your face with popcorn. No. Seriously, you can't see anything. Look. 
I don't believe you. <laughs> Look at that. Can't see anything. Damn. <laughs> yeah, amazing lighting in here. Yep, my friend was covering up his face with popcorn. So, yeah. Now you've seen that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, our theater was much less crowded here than it was for our, the last DC movie I talked about, Batman v Superman, where there it was all filled up. Here, there were like, I don't know, like 20, maybe 15, I guess, people in there with us. So, yeah. But, at least I got to see Skull Island's trailer on the big screen, so that was cool. Um, so yeah. It was an okay experience, this movie. I wouldn't mind seeing it again, but I don't know. It was incredibly mediocre. Um, although one more thing I forgot to talk about. The music. Most of the songs from the trailer are actually used in this movie, and I was shocked by that. Like, so few movies do that, but I was so happy about that, because they use You Don't Own Me, um, Biscuit and Rippany. I still cannot pronounce that right, I don't think. Um, mo pretty much all the songs in the third trailer, but they don't use Ballroom Blitz. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe they just couldn't find a place to put that in. Also, a lot of the scenes in the trailer are not in there. Like, when Harley Quinn's slapping a table, not in there. When they're deciding what drinks to get, not in there. When in, when June Moon tilts her head like that, not in there. So, yeah, there were quite a few scenes cut, I'm guessing. I've heard this movie got last minute cuts. I'm guessing that those were the scenes and stuff, so... Yeah, it makes sense. I get it. I hope that there's a director cut, though, with that in it, so that I can actually see what was going on there. So, yeah. It was an incredibly okay movie. So, yeah. Bye.